This is Andrew Stotts of A. Stotts Investment Research, and I'm going to talk to you about forecasting revenue growth when valuing a company. This is an interesting subject, of course. It's not an easy subject, too. So how does an analyst forecast sales growth for a company that they're valuing, right? What if the company's in a cyclical industry? That revenue is not easy to forecast. It could go up and down quite dramatically, as well as, of course, profit. I've talked only about revenue or sales in this case, just because I'm going to keep the, the, this uh, PowerPoint simple or this video simple, right? But what, have, what if a company has really volatile sales growth? I mean, it's easy to forecast a company that's just increasing revenue steadily over time, but what about volatility? And another question is, is it wrong to forecast the steady growth rate for each of the future years. So if you see a forecast and the analyst says, mm, I forecast 10% growth in revenue over the next five years. Mm, really? So let's take a look. Take a look at this forecast right here. Is a forecast of 9.6 unrealistic? Let's just say that we're looking at a forecast period of 2017 to 2027. So a 10 year forecast. The problems that you'll see with this is that first, it's not a likely outcome. In fact, it's very unlikely. No company is going to have that kind of steady growth in sales. The second thing is that the analysts may not actually have done any work, so they don't really have any deep knowledge of it. So they throw this one in there, and they hope that nobody sees anything. The next thing is that they say, uh, as I say, the user of the forecast may just lose confidence. Like, how could I possibly base a valuation on such a forecast? So these are the problems that we have with such a uh, forecast. Now, let's move over and let's just say, now I, I show a few periods of time of the actual here, 2014, 2015, 2016, but I'm forecasting, let's just say that we're forecasting from 2017, just the same to 2027, a 10-year forecast. Bingo. We don't see a line anymore. We see a lot of points. We know that companies' uh, revenue can be very volatile. This company... Is very volatile. So the problem is, how could the analysts accurately predict these swings in the sales growth right here? How could they possibly predict that next year in 2017, let's say the first year of forecasting, it's going to have 10% negative, the next year 10% positive, the next year 15 or let's say 18% positive? How do they know that? And more importantly, the further you go out in your forecast, What's the level of confidence of that forecast? Well, it goes down and down. I mean, who can predict something 10 years from now? So how confident would someone be with the analyst negative forecasts in 2026 and 2027? I mean, those are significant. Now, you could say, well, the analyst is forecasting the whole industry. They think that these cycles are going to happen like that. But how much confidence would you really have in that? So these are the two problems that we have if we pick a standard or stable one or if we do a sales forecast that has a lot of discrete points. Ah, but I've tricked you. These are actually the same, right? The line is an average of the points. So this chart combines the prior two charts, and you see that 9.6 is an average of those points. So is an average really that unrealistic? To pick a 9.6% average, does an average take into consideration all the wild fluctuations? Of course, it's in there. That average accounts for that. Now, of course, we can measure the volatility by looking at standard deviation or something, but we don't need to look at that. We can just see that an average actually is encapsulating all of those varied points. So what's the message I want you to get from this? What, do you, what, should, what have you learned from this? First, yes. Using an average revenue growth rate in a forecast feels unrealistic. Just a flat line, 8%, 9%, 10% growth. However, it may appear less unrealistic than a wildly swinging forecast of each year's revenue growth, let's say going out over 10 years, as we just saw. Actually, the average incorporates those wild swings. So, therefore, an average forecast is not as inaccurate as it may appear to some people. Got it? You have any questions? Put them in the comments below. I hope this helps you understand the way I think about forecasting. Have a great day.